Okay, I think we're ready to go. Okay, hello everyone and welcome to today's Archer webinar, which will be on the optimization of LESS goal. Um, and my name is Nilofa Bangawala. I am a member of the Archer ECSE team. For those of you that don't know, um, ECSE, which stands for Embedded Computational Science and Engineering, is a program that funds um, the Archer user community to develop software in a sustainable manner to run on Archer. And the sorts of projects that get funded are those that look at implementing algorithmic improvements to existing codes, for example, or improving the scalability of software on higher call counts on Archer, or even adding new functionality to existing code. As part of um, the ECSE program, we ask um, people who are involved in ECSE projects to um, give a webinar at the end of their projects to inform the community of the work they've done. And, um, and that's what we have today. We have uh, Kai Di Wan from Zhejiang University and Jun um, Xia from Brunel University. Um, they have been work working on optimizing LES Coal, which is a large eddy simulation um, for uh, coal combustion. And in this webinar, Kaidi will talk about all the work he's done with Jun on optimizing this code. So with no further ado, um, I will let Kaidi get on with it, as it were. Thank you very much. Okay, Kaidi, take it away. Okay, uh, this is Kaidi from Zhejiang University, and uh, I'm going to uh, summarize the results obtained during the ECSE 05 Watery project. Uh, uh, the project title is uh, Optimization of LESCO for Large Scale High Fidelity Simulation of Code Parasites and uh, Combustion. Um, so uh, here is the outline of the webinar. So first, we um, provide some background information. Um, here, uh, you can see on the screen is uh, a direct uh, a recording of the polarizer coal combustion. Well, the first one is the uh, permix the mesen air flame, and uh, the second one is uh, uh, the mesen flame uh, fitted with some coal particles. And the third one is the, uh, uh, the video captured by a high-speed camera. So um, what is coal combustion? Uh, well, uh, in the coal, we um, uh, basically have three, three main parts. The first one is uh, moisture based in water, and the second is the uh, ash. Ash and uh, it's not, not burned. And the third one is the residual coal, which is uh, uh, burned during the combustion. So um, it's, it's, com it's combustible. Uh, so uh, so the residual coal uh, first uh, uh, during the combustion will have a, a pyrolysis process to uh, turn it into a char and the volatile. The volatile is basically is uh, gas fuel and it will uh, it's ho homogeneous uh, reaction and uh, turn into products. And uh, for the char, it's basically solid carbon, and it will have the surface uh, reaction uh, like oxidation and uh, also uh, turn into products. So this is the how the coal burns the, the uh, air. Uh, and uh, for the first uh, for the first process, uh, the pyrosis it's, uh, you know, it's the first stage of coal combustion and uh, has a very important effects on the overall combustion of coal. So uh, here we have, uh, for, for to uh, simulate the pyrolysis process, if we have uh, two uh, different models. First one is the SFOM model. Uh, it stands for the single first order model. So it's a, it's a conventional model and uh, used the uh, First order Arrhenius equation to describe the uh, overall pro pro overall pyrolysis process, and uh, it's how the kinetic parameters, the AV, EV, and the Q are uh, need to be calibrated before the model can be used to uh, simulate the, uh, the pyrolysis of a specific code. And then uh, later we developed, the, uh, you know, the researchers developed the CPD model, which is and for the chemical percolation demultization model. Um, it is currently the state of the art pyrolysis model and the, uh, the kinetic param parameters in this model is general and they have you know, 
uh, we don't need to do this calibration process. Um, then we uh, show, uh, you know, uh, to, to investigate the uh, uh, pyrolysis characteristics uh, in the, you know, in the turbulent uh, uh, circumstance, we uh, usually use a, a cold jet flame. And here we, we have some, uh, you know, the simulation setups. Uh, it's, uh, um, here we, we investigate the pyrolysis. So, uh, so we have a very high temperature cold flow. Um, and it's 2000 K and, uh, you know, the cold particles were injected with uh, cold air, uh, no, cold nitrogen into the computational domain. Here, the Reynolds number is 8,200 and uh, we have uh, 1.56 uh, five, uh, five, million cells. Um, so since the, uh, we, uh, we only have nitrogen here, so the cold particles only have um, pyrosis and the no, no uh, oxygen digestion with uh, oxygen. So uh, for the outlet, we use the convective boundary condition. And uh, uh, for the pyrosis model, we have the CP model and the SFOM model. And we can compare the, uh, the results of the two different cases. Uh, here we, we have some uh, animations which shows uh, the simulation. Uh, the first one is uh, the particle temperature and the uh, uh, particle density and the gas temperature and, and then the five different uh, five uh, typical volatile species pre predicted by the CV model. So you can see after the cold particles are injected in, uh, its temperature in, uh, increased due to the high temperature cold flow and the, its density decreased because uh, the volatiles yielded from the particles. And uh, for the gas temperature is similar. The, the main uh, primary jet is heated up by the cold flow, and then you can see the world has uh, uh, yielded from the particles, and uh, yeah, the species concentration uh, rise up. And uh, here is a 3D uh, figure of the uh, of the CBD case. So we use the online CBD model to describe the pyrosis of cold particles. And uh, you can see uh, the uh, particles uh, comes from the, you know, from the main uh, primary jet uh, jet core to the uh, outside. You can find its uh, density degrees and the also uh, so which means uh, uh, the volatiles uh, yielded from the particles and uh, that's where the pyrosis happens. Uh, and we can also observe that the isolated volatile zone, uh, the growing volatile zone, and the continuous volatile surface from the bigger. Uh, the, the ISO, ISO surface here is the, uh, is, uh, is, uh, represent the, uh, the volatile concentration. The surface is colored by the uh, gas temperature. Uh, here, uh, the, uh, the left figure uh, illustrates how uh, the CPD model are copied with the LS solver. So um, actually, it's quite simple. So basically, we, uh, when, we, when the temperature, uh, the new particle temperature is predicted by the LS solver, uh, the CPD model will read this new temper particle temperature in and uh, uh, restore the uh, CPD status variables of this part in the previous time step and then uh, update the pyrolysis status of this particle and uh, so uh, with the, with the um, mass difference of of the particle in the current time step and previous time step we can uh, get the you know the source terms of this particle and then the uh, safety status variables will be updated by uh, recording the uh, variables in the current time step. So in the right figure, we show the comparison between the uh, CPD model and the hybrid the SFOM model, uh, the result predicted by the two models. So you can see uh, the upper one is the CPD areas and the, uh, the downside is the, uh, the uh, calibrated SFOM model with uh, areas. So you can see uh, even 
even with the calibration process, the, uh, the conventional XFO model cannot uh, fully predict the, uh, represent the results of the CPD LES. So uh, after the paralysis, we also uh, done some combustion cases. So here, uh, we use the online CPD to describe the paralysis of co particles and the PASR, the partially stale the reactor model uh, to describe the volatile combustion and the, the kinetic diffusion model to uh, describe the charge reaction, which is the uh, surface reaction. So here, uh, the left figure shows the uh, volatility heating rate, uh, gas temperature, and uh, also the car, which is one of the main uh, volatile species, uh, the instantaneous uh, distribution. And uh, the right figure shows the statics, statistics of the uh, particle velocity with the mean velocity and the RMS velocity and uh, uh, compared with uh, the experimental data and the you know, previous simulation result. So it's like a validation. So our result is you know, uh, close, closely uh, with the experimental measurement. So uh, here provides some more uh, variables, you know, the comparison of uh, validation with the experimental data, including uh, the particle diameter, the uh, uh, more fraction of uh, oxygen and the carbon dioxide in the uh, uh, Plant species in the gas field. And the, in the right figure, we compared the result between the CPD and the SFOM. Um, you know, uh, it's, uh, um, it's like, uh, showing the instantaneous pyrolysis characteristics is the uh, uh, normalized uh, pyrolysis rate versus the uh, particle heating rate. So you can see uh, in the CPD model, in the Particle heating rate becomes higher, its instantaneous paralysis will also rise up. But in the SFOM, SFOM model, uh, we can hardly observe these effects. So, which also shows that the calibrated SFOM model cannot fully predict the uh, underlying physics in the paralysis. Uh, then we uh, talk, uh, uh, go, go to the second. Uh, uh, section is shows the modulation of the project. So um, power is co combustion is important because uh, you know about 25% of the electric power uh, in the UK is generated by uh, the PCC uh, power is co combustion. But in China, the city is uh, around the 70%. Um, so uh, it's the proper prediction, control, and the optimization of power is co combustion practice. Uh, very important for both UK and China. Well, uh, well, in the coal-fired furnace, the optical access is poor, so which makes it difficult to apply advanced laser diagno diagnostics. Uh, however, with the, the rapid development of computing uh, capacity, uh, high-energy simulation can becomes an important and effective tool here. Uh, Especially the high fidelity simulation. Uh, and, uh, so we can use the, uh, the simulation tool to study the uh, co uh, paralysis and the combustion characteristics. So uh, that's why uh, we, we want to, you know, uh, to uh, further develop the, our simulation tool and to do some, you know, uh, larger cases like. Uh, uh, in larger dissimulation of PCC in like in uh, se semi-industrial furnace. So uh, then we go to the third, third section. We uh, briefly introduced our uh, code, which is called the next code. Next code stands for the larger dissimulations of coal combustion, and uh, it have it is consists of six main modules. Well, the first one is the momentum module. Uh, which solves the navier focus equation in the uh, low Mach number form. But the second one is the scalar module, which um, transports species and temperature. Third one is the particle module, uh, used the Lagrangian method to trace co particles and uh, considering the two way coupling between uh, gas phase and particle phase. And uh, the fourth one is the radiation module, which solves the radiation transfer 
And the fifth one is the parent modules of the uh, Poisson equation, which is the pressure equation. Uh, and the, the last one is the SGS module, which calculates the subgrade scale mod terms. Uh, well, here the figure shows the original scaling performance of less code. Well, uh, as you can see, uh, the, the overall uh, images of the code can have a satisfactory scaling up to 200 codes. Uh, well, after that, the uh, uh, parallel efficiency is not good. So for the different modules, uh, you can see uh, the scalar momentum and the SGS modules have a, a good uh, speed up, while the particle radiation pressure modules uh, it, it's not, not very good. It shows poor scaling performance at large core numbers. So uh, we, we want to improve this, so that's why uh, the, 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 pro, the main uh, target of the project so uh, here, uh, the, the aim of the project is to achieve 80% of the theoretical power efficiency when up to uh, 3,000 computing codes are used on Azure. Uh, well, you know, the, as you can see, the original code can only achieve a good scaling up to 200 codes. Well, to uh, achieve this aim, we uh, basically have a few optimization strategies, like uh, developing uh, for the particle module, we want to develop and implement a new parallel particle chasing algorithm to uh, improve the, uh, the power efficiency of particle module. And for the pressure mod solver, we want to uh, improve it to considering both the robustness and the efficiency. And uh, also for the radiation module, we want to improve it. And uh, for the overall code, we want to uh, implement new MPI and the fortune functionalities like uh, the one side the uh, communications you know provide the in MPI two standard and the non blocking collectives provide the in MPI three standards and also C like pointers uh, provide the in fortune two thousand and eight uh, and also we want to implement a three dimensional domain decomposition approach or so currency in the original code is a uh, uh, two dimensional uh, domain decomposition so we want to upgrade it and to you know to um, to let the uh, in physical information transport more efficiently since in each direction uh, there's le less cost so it will be, uh, the physical information will be transferred more efficiently inside the computational domain. Uh, so um, for the pressure radiation and particle module are the three main. Uh, uh, difficulties or, or the three main uh, three major works. So, so here we will uh, focus on the them. So, uh, for the first one, the pressure module. Uh, so, in the last code, the uh, the pressure equation is uh, is finally become the Poisson Poisson's equation. So, the pressure module is in, in mainly to solve this uh, Poisson's equation. So. Uh, in less code, uh, uh, the equation system is solved by calling Hyper, which is an uh, open source software package designed for uh, solving large sparse linear systems of equations on massively uh, parallel computers. Well, uh, you can get this uh, software package on GitHub, and uh, it's written in C. Uh, but it also provides an interface for Fortune. Uh, the, it requires MPI library to, you know, for the parallel solving, and it also provides uh, uh, for the solvers. It have multi grade and uh, Prelog based solvers like uh, SMG, TFMG, uh, PCG, and so on. And it also have you know uh, preconditioners like diagonal and uh, TFMG. Um, so in before the optimization, uh, let's call uh, employs the SMG, which is a um, uh, multi-grade uh, solver, and it is particularly robust, but uh, it's relatively slow. So here we uh, we want to explore the performance of different solvers and preconditioners on solving the uh, pressure pressure equation in uh, LES of power like uh, coal combustion. So we uh, have 14, 14 setups with different solvers and preconditioners. Uh, and test them and compare comparison. 
So, um, so here is the, the result of the comparison. So you can see uh, the number of it, uh, well, uh, the labels on the, so you can see for the labels, the left one is, uh, you know, is represented the solver and the right one is represented the per condition. So for SMG9 means uh, the SMG solver was used with no per conditioner. And uh, for example, for hybrid, the PFMG means the hybrid solver and the PFMG per conditioner were employed. So it can be found uh, the SMG, the left figure shows uh, the number of iterations, and the right figure shows the computational time per time step for the 14 different setup. So um, you can find the SMG none has the least the number of iterations, but the, uh, the computational time is not the not the shortest. Well, uh, the least the time consuming method are the uh, GMIES PFMG and the uh, PCG PFMG. So, um, so the, the, these two solvers, uh, with preconditioners are used, you know, uh, in hybrid to, to solve the uh, pressure equation in Mexico, uh, you know, after this, uh, comparison. So this is basically the, the work of the, for the pressure module. So we find the optimized solvers and the preconditioners in the hybrid and uh, we use them to, in, in the last code. Um, so for the radiation module, uh, so we uh, used the uh, discrete ordinate method DOM with the S4 scheme. Well, uh, the S4 scheme is a discretization scheme. So after the discretization, we have 24 directions, which means uh, 24 different ways. And uh, the first order, and here is the is a sim, uh, simplified uh, uh, equation for the for the DOM, and the, with the first order upwind scheme, uh, and the finite difference form, uh, the, the equation becomes like uh, uh, here. And uh, uh, for in the case of you know using one single CPU CPU core is very easy. So for any direction of radiation, we start from the um, you know, most uh, upstream boundary grid point and then sequentially with each grid point uh, in the direction that the direction that the radiation beam prop propagates and uh, to you know you can get the radiation intensity i. And uh, well for multiple cores then it becomes tricky because uh because the the rate radiation intensity date of the upstream CPU core is, is required for the, you know, for an inner central subdomain to complete the, the calculation. So, uh, so which means the method is inherently serial, and uh, each processor requires the data on its upwind boundaries becoming available before it can begin meaningful computations, and uh, and uh, which lim limited the limit limits the speed up and the parallel efficiency. So um, here we have two uh, different uh, optimization strategies. And the first one is called the priority queuing, which uh, we adjust the computation se sequence of the 24 different rates in different cores in order to optimize the transport of radiation information from the domain boundary into the inner subdomains. Uh, uh, well, in the in the code, we actually have 24 weeks. So here we can, uh, uh, you know, sit, uh, do some simplification. Let's say we have, uh, we, we use this, uh, this three as an illustration. And uh, here in the uh, figure, so uh, we have different numbers for, for, for the, you know, this is for the domain decomposition for the uh, parallel solving. And uh, the cost with the same number basically are independent with each other and can uh, be uh, processed at the same time. Uh, but uh, for the cost with different numbers, we have some uh, dependence here. For example, in for the uh, for this ray, uh, the cost number two depends on cost number one, and the 
yeah, three depends on two, like like this. So, uh, usually, uh, so it, it's it's very difficult to achieve a high uh, power efficiency. Uh, so we um, we use priority queuing here to uh, optimize the uh, uh, calculation uh, computation sequence of of, of radiation rates on different cores. Um, so uh, before the optimization, so each each CPU core will calculate the, uh, the same same rate at the at the same time. So after they uh, uh, calculate all these twenty four rates, they, they update the source term and we, we do this again and we get converged. But uh, after the optimization, uh, when call one do this calculate this way. Uh, call number two will do, you know, uh, any any other rates. So, for example, like this one. And uh, for the next time when when call one uh, do like 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 uh, for example this this way, uh, then call two uh, calculate, you know, uh, this uh, 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 the, uh, the First rate, and then which means uh, the uh, the radiation information can uh, transport them more efficiently inside the domain because uh, uh, before the uh, uh, before the optimization work, the uh, the transport the frequency of the radi radiation information is uh, once per 24 ray calculations. You now only after the the 24 rays have been uh, uh, calculate the, the uh, boundary uh, information of the upstream cost can be uh, transported to the downstream cost. But with this uh, priority queuing technique, uh, the, the radiation information can be transported to the downstream uh, once per rate calculation, so it's uh, significantly improved. And uh, after um, so this is the first uh, uh, optimized uh, uh, technique, and the second one is uh, the very fond uh, swift uh, algorithm, which is uh, uh, recommended by EPCC. Uh, well, uh, similar, the cell you, you can see in the uh, figure, the cells of the same color are independent and uh, can be processed in uh, in parallel, which means at the same time. Uh, you know, in this slice, slice way, and uh, and the key is the here is the boundary data can be uh, sent to the downwind neighbors before all the boundaries get updated. Well, uh, the disadvantage of this method, including like for a three D domain, the master use a two D domain decomposition, and also because it calculates in this uh, slice way, so it that uh memory memory access is uh inefficient so here we use uh uh for for, for the uh convenience of demonstration we use a 2d domain so uh, in this case we must use a 1d one dimensional domain decomposition and here uh the number one two nine on this figure uh shows the uh the different uh, uh CPU cores, and uh, here, uh, as you can see, we we uh, process this, uh, do this computation. Uh, so the radiation rays in this direction. So here we, we do this in a slice, and uh, once we, uh, for example, we do like this way, and once we hit the boundary, we we, we have a uh, updated the uh, boundary value here. And this will be, uh, you know, stored in the matrix. Uh, yeah, stored in stored, and then we go on, and uh, we have more uh, with, with uh, boundary values uh, stored in the uh, in the array, and uh, then uh, after you know we have set several uh, boundary values, then we can send this uh, update the boundaries. Uh, uh, values to the uh, downstream cores, like 
you know, from, from the CPU core one to CPU core two. And the, then the uh, uh, core two can, again, it's uh, a meaningful computation because he already has the updated uh, boundary values. So uh, theoretically, if, uh, if there's no, you know, no MPI lag and, uh, you know, the MPI, uh, MPI uh, tra trans transfer speed is infinity, then it means uh, we, we can, well, once we got an up, uh, uh, updated the boundary value, we, we uh, transport it to, to the downstream course via MPI communication and then uh, theoretically, when 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 the uh, computation hit here, uh, basically all, all these uh, CPU calls from one to nine are doing uh, meaningful computation. They are working together at the same time. So, well, uh, this is the situation after the optimization. Well, if we don't have this uh, technique, then it means we when the call one. Uh, did the after call one do do did the whole uh computation task of the of the subdomain then it updates the boundary to CPU call two and the call two do this again and then it goes to call three. So it's like an like in, in a serial way. So uh so this theoretically the diagonal slicing should uh, uh largely improve this uh uh, you know, this, uh, inher inherent serial, uh, algorithm. So, and here we have the tuning parameters here because, uh, uh, because the M block value. So it, it basically the, this value decides, um, how the frequency of the MPI communication for transport the boundary, uh, values to the downstream course. Uh, if the M block is set to one, it means once we have one uh, new update, the boundary value we uh, transport the information to the downstream core. If it's set it to uh, like 100, it means we once we collect the 100 boundary values, then we do one uh, MPI communications to uh, transport the 100 values to downstream core. So. Um, so the key of this method is also uh, to improve the uh, transportation of radiation information uh, between CPU cores. And uh, here is the result of the, and also the comparison between the two optimization methods. So we use uh, 10 million uh, grid cells. And uh, uh, first we need to decide the, you know, the optimize the M block value for the method two. So you, from the left figure, uh, so we use 48 cores and uh, uh, also uh, we tried the M block value from one to uh, 10,000 and the compare, compared to the com com computational time uh, per time step for the radiation module. So you can find like uh, the optimized value should be like uh, 10 to 20 or, or 50. 50 is, is in the in the same uh, level of uh, time time mm, consume consuming. Well, if the M block value is too small or too too large, basically it's uh, it's inefficient because if, if the M block value is too small, it means uh, the MPI uh, communication cost will be very very large because it's too, too many uh, communications here. Well, if the M block value is too large, this means uh, the radiation information uh, transportation between different cores is uh, not good enough. So, um, in the last figure, we compared the the original, uh, you know, the type, uh, time of radiation module per time step uh, for with, with different core core numbers. Which are uh, by the different methods. First one, blue one is the original method. The red one is the uh, priority queuing method, and third one is the uh, um, waveform waveform method. The, the uh, 
So you can find uh, for the for for example for three thousand course uh, the the computational time of the uh, priority queuing method is sixty percent shorter than the original method, which means the uh, power, power, power efficiency of the radiation module has been uh, significantly improved. Although, although for 48 cores, there's no uh, significant difference here. But for 3,000 cores, yes, uh, we, we have a 60% improvement here. Well, for the um, wavefront, wavefront method, uh, so uh, actually, you can find for 48 cores, uh, so it, it becomes uh, actually it becomes sl slower, and uh, for three thousand cores, it's also uh, the computation uh, uh, computational time is also large a bit larger than the original method. Well, um, you, you can find the parallel acc acceleration from uh, forty-eight to three thousand cores for the wavefront method is, is quite good. Um, it may achieve a better performance when more CPU cores are used. Um, and also, uh, from here, from the CSP, you can find uh, active messages as more suitable for a long tube, long, uh, for a domain like a lo long tube with a large, uh, uh, yeah, lo long tube or long, long channel. Um, then it uh, have you know uh, have a larger chance for the older CPU cores work in the at the same time. Um, so uh, currently, um, for the uh, larger simulation of power light coca masking for our uh, typical cases, we found actually uh, the priority queuing method is, is better uh, for you know uh, for our domain for you know. Uh, our uh, computational scale, like uh, 3,000 cores. Uh, and the last one is uh, for the particle module. Um, so uh, here we, in the last co code, we use like launching particle tracing uh, to represent these, these particles uh, in the Orion uh, gas, gas field. So um, for this like launching particle chasing, we uh, we typically have two parallel strategies: uh, in the particle decomposition and the, the domain decomposition. Um, when using the particle decomposition strategy, all the particles in the computational domain are divided into a series of equal sized subgroups according to the number of cores and uh, assigned to each core, and uh, well, in this method, each code uh, requires the access to the gas flow field of the whole domain. And uh, well, it can ensure the perfect load balance between the cores for, for the particle module. Uh, and it does not need to transfer the particle information between, between different cores. But however, this, this method needs every CPU code to uh, be able to obtain the whole gas field data. And uh, it means uh, for a, you know for a distributed memory supercomputer using the MPI architecture, it means uh, each core needs to store a copy of all gas flow data in the in, in the local memory of the core. So it, it will uh, result in a high demand for memory. So uh, so this method is, is more suitable when the uh, computational cost of particle phase is much larger than that of the gas phase. Well, the second method is the domain decomposition method. And uh, it is the parallel, it's the method used in the last code uh, before the optimization. So in, in this method, the computational domains are you know, divided into a series of subdomains uh, according, you know, to the gas, according to the uh, uh, Eurarian field and uh, assigned to each each CPU core, and uh, at the same time the particles lo located in each subdomains are also assigned to the corresponding cores. 
uh, when the particles move through the subdomain boundaries, uh, we, we need to do MPI communications to transport the uh, particles to you know adjacent CPU cores. Uh, however, in this method, if the particle phase is not uniformly distributed in the domain, it means uh, in some cores they have more particles, and that in other cores they basically uh, no particles there, then uh, it will cause you know uh, the load imbalance issue, and uh, uh, so in general the uh, the domain decomposition method is useful when when the um, particle phase is uniformly distributed in the physical space or the combinational cost of the uh, gas phase is much larger than the cost of particle phase. So the load imbalance issue becomes a very minor thing. Um, however, <laughs> for the for our um, you know a gas solid two phase gas flow of uh, Power lines, the coal combustion. Uh, we have the significant load imbalances in the uh, particle module because the particles are not uh, uh, equally uh, uniformly distributed in the domain. Um, and uh, uh, for the uh, also the particle, the combinational cost of the particle phase is uh, it can cannot be ignored compared to the uh, gas phase. So uh, the parallel efficiency of the domain decomposition strategy will be uh, affected by the loading balance issue. Um, so uh, as you can see here is uh, the typical you know, domain decomposition uh, and uh, of, the, uh, of our uh, case, conventional domain. And, uh, for the, uh, the uh, two-phase jet, you can see the, uh, this Orange region here uh, represents the typical distribution of the particles. So, so it will not uh, uniformly uh, distribute in the whole domain. So, uh, so how we improve this situation? Uh, so, can we uh, distribute the particles evenly to each core? And uh, another thing is we have uh, the, the Gas and the particle phases are coupled together. We have so how can we consider in the to recoupling if we distribute the particles uh, evenly to each core? Uh, and then um, we we uh, based on the uh, domain composition method, we uh, in, in implement a new parallel strategy named the OH help is uh, one hundred help. Uh, implement this method to the electrical code and to improve the uh, power efficiency of the particle module. So um, with this method, we can uh, uh, solve this load imbalance issue uh, and achieve good scalability. Um, the OH help method is originally developed for the uh, power simulation of plasma, and here the method is first applied to the uh, simulation of uh, gas solid two phase turbulent uh, jet flow. Um, after employing OH help, the method, the, the OH help method is mainly used to uh, investigate the load imbalance between the CPU cores and uh, provide uh, a particle transfer table. So, according to the table, the less code code uh, performs the particle transfer between uh, different CPU cores via MPI communication. To achieve uh, load balancing. Uh, moreover, since uh, we have two recoupling here, the the source term of the uh, particle phase to the gas phase is also uh, transported between the cores uh, at the same time. So uh, so we can all considering the two recoupling source term uh, in this method. So uh, here. Uh, the, and the particles, you know, uh, will be sent from the uh, heavy load in the course to light load in the course to ensure the overall uh, load balance. And uh, the corresponding gas uh, properties and soft terms will also uh, be transferred. So uh, in the next figure, we uh, show the uh, uh, how to say uh, the number of particles 
number of code particles in uh, each CPU core. Uh, so the this is for it's a processor rank so from zero to the three three thousand, and uh, the blue lines is the uh, original method, which means that before optimization. And the red lines is is the optimized one. So you can see in the original code, uh, then it basically means a significant load imbalance in in some cores. Uh, it has a high uh, load of of particles in other cores. It's basically uh, no no particles there, which is uh, um, which is either can can be uh, due to the you know the the physical uh, distribution of these uh, core particles, and uh, after the optimization, you can find that the uh, load balance becomes very uh, perfectly good because uh, you know the particles will be transferred from uh, this uh, high, heavy load cost to the light load cost, and the the right figure shows the uh, t computational time per time step for the particle module. Uh, the blue blue one is the original code, and the red one is the optimized ESCO code. So for 48 cores and 3,000 cores, you can um, both uh, have can find a significant improvement here. So basically, uh, the computational time is like um, an order less than the original method, which means uh, a big improvement. And uh, in in the in the particle module, we also found the uh, one side of the communication can be an uh, important thing here. Uh, so basically, uh, mainly in, it is in the bookkeeping step in the particle transfer scheme. Um, uh, the bookkeeping book keeping scheme, uh, step is performed uh, before the particles are transferred into this uh, perform the tool uh, collect the information about how the particles are need to be transferred so um, well basically all the codes need to know uh, how 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 the particles are transferred between uh, in the, between the subdomains so they know uh, how to uh, send out and uh, receive these MPI messages. Uh, typically, uh, we use uh, MPI collective communication functions like uh, MPI together, MPI, MPI all reduce, MPI auto uh, to collect this information for all the calls. But uh, uh, as we know, the MPI collective operations are very expensive when large number of calls are used. Um, as you can see uh, in the left figure, uh, you can uh, you find the computational time per time step for part of the module with different cores. With the original uh, MPI all gets employed in the last core, uh, the blue bar is for for, uh, for 48 cores and to 3,000 cores. You can find uh, from 1,200 to 3,000 cores. The, uh, computational time actually uh, increased a lot. Uh, so we found this uh, mainly due to the uh, MPI collective communication op op operations. Um, and uh, then we uh, e implemented the MPI one-sided uh, communication function, MPI put, to um, uh, uh, to um, uh, to use the MPI put in, instead of the uh, MPI all gather here, and then uh, in the figure uh, of the which shows the comparison of the two methods, we can find uh, uh, when the call numbers is more like uh, uh, 500 and less, the, the difference between the two methods are very minor. Well, however, for when the number of calls are used is larger than uh, 1,000, then we can uh, saw the obvious advantage of the uh, one-sided communication. And uh, when 3,000 calls are used, uh, the one-sided uh, communication MPI put is an, an order of magnitude faster than the collective 
uh, communications and uh, thereby significantly improve the power efficiency of the uh, particle module. And uh, in the last figure, we uh, compared the, the, you know, uh, uh, the optimized the particle module on the uh, different uh, core numbers. And uh, we, we here we are uh, based on the computational time per time step of the particle module to uh, get the power efficiency of the particle module. And the, the blue lines for the two million particles and the, the red line uh, for 10 million particles and the, the green line for a weak scaling uh, to, uh, you know, um, uh, to ensure the uh, with, with more code, code numbers becomes larger and then we have more particles in the domain. So um, for for the weak scaling with the particle module uh, uh, can achieve uh, like more than 80% uh, for uh, in 3000 cores are used. Uh, so basically this uh, strong scaling and uh, weak scaling. So uh, for weak scaling, the uh, the ratio of the uh, computation to communication is more reasonable here. So it uh, can achieve a better uh, performance. And uh, so we uh, go to the, you know, the last section like uh, uh, to show the parallel performance uh, after the optimization of the project. So um, uh, after all the uh, optimization work, has been done. Uh, so the left uh, left figure shows the uh, uh, the power efficiency uh, uh, in like in a strong scaling test. Uh, the strong scaling test used a, a ten million cell grid, and uh, uh, for the particle phase, we have uh, around the ten million particles uh, employed. So you can find the, uh, the optimized less code can achieve uh, a good parallel efficiency is more than more than eighty percent when uh, using no more than uh, one thousand hundred cores so here. So uh, this parallel efficiency is good, but uh, we we use uh, three thousand cores. Uh, the parallel efficiency of the code dropped to uh, below fifty percent. Uh, this is mainly because you know uh, because the the number of grid cells and the particles assigned to each core is too small and uh, which result a relatively high communication to computation ratio um, the right figure shows the uh, results from a weak scaling test uh, in the weak scaling test uh, the number of grid cells and particles are both fixed at the 2,500,000 uh, per CPU core. Well, compared with the strong scaling test, uh, the big scaling test is more reasonable for evaluation of power efficiency of the uh, uh, our area simulations because usually uh, small scale areas cases uh, use fewer CPU cores. While for large scale uh, simulation cases, we we will we want to use more CPU cores. So uh, it can be seen uh, in the weak scaling test that the optimized less code can achieve 80% uh, of the theoretical power efficiency when using uh, 3,000 cores of Archa. So uh, now we go to the conclusion section. Uh, so uh, in the in this research project, we are uh, we present and discussed the uh, power efficiency of and the optimization work of the last code, code for the larger dissemination of power is the coal combustion. Uh, well, the original last code, code has a, a satisfactory scaling up to uh, 200 cores, and uh, it can be found that the scalar module, momentum module, and the SGS module uh, have a good scaling, while the performance of the particle module and radiation module and pressure module of the original code is uh, is not good. Uh, and uh, we uh, employed five optimization strategies. Well, uh, like you, 
uh, include the new MTN and forcing functions, uh, upgrade the domain decomposition from two dimensional to a 43 dimensional, uh, and uh, to uh, optimize the solvers and the practitioners in hybrid, uh, which is used for solving the pressure equation. And uh, uh, for the radiation module, we uh, employ two different optimization approaches, like uh, the uh, priority queuing and the uh, wave font method, and uh, we uh, employ them and did the made the comparison. And uh, for the particle module, uh, we uh, employ a new parallel algorithm of the particle phase uh, named uh, the OS help method, and uh, to solve the uh, load invariant issue in the parallel solving of the particle phase. Um, after adopting this uh, optimization. Uh, strategies, the power efficiency of the less code has been uh, significantly improved. And uh, uh, in the weak scaling test that uh, optimized the uh, less code uh, can achieve 80% of the theoretical power efficiency when using uh, 3072 cores on Archer, which meets the aim of the project. Uh, and this basically the uh, all the research work. Uh, have been done, and uh, we want to acknowledge, acknowledge the embedded SSE program of the Archa UK. Uh, and uh, I want to acknowledge the support from the EPSRC of the UK and uh, the Archa UK National Super Community Service. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Kaidi. Oh, that was great. Um, thank you, everyone. Goodbye.